Okay, teardown time. This is a 65C02, the CMOS variation of the original NMOS 6502, uh, which probably kicked off the personal computer revolution, uh, finding its way into things like the Apple II, uh, the Commodore PET, and uh, a bunch of other extremely important uh, personal computers of its era. Uh, this particular one is uh, copyright 1993. It's the CMOS version. It's designed by the Western Design Center. Uh, you can see that here with the copyright on the actual mask. Let's um, zoom out though first just to orient ourselves to what we're looking at. Um, this is an 8-bit microprocessor, uh, obviously fairly old, coming on about 25 years, this particular design. Uh, on the outside there are a large number of bond pads, and then right next to it the uh, ESD protection diodes. And then in the center, of course, the actual microprocessor. Uh, this is quite unusual. There's a lot of white space between the pads and the actual uh, processor core. I think what we're looking at here is a die shrink of the actual processor in the center, uh, but for some reason they kept the pad locations the same, probably because the wire bonder for the uh, dip package was already set up, and they didn't want to move the pad locations, so they kept them there. Let's see. Uh, the center there, of course, is a nice logo of the company, uh, designed in uh, Arizona. Um, a very a small number of design engineers were required for this particular processor, and unlike the thousands you see now in modern processors, um, these are often designed by just a few people, um, and very impressive indeed. Now, uh, unusually in this chip here, it actually points me to the patents, which is incredibly helpful to actually decode this chip. Uh, in particular, let's take a look at patent uh, 465992. Okay, well here's one of the four patents that was cited on the actual silicon. Uh, U.S. patent system is wonderful because it's an incredible resource. Inventor is listed as William D. Mensch. Uh, I think he's better known as Bill Mensch in the literature I can see on the web. Um, he actually founded the Western Design Center, and uh, before that he was a uh, engineering manager at Motorola, where he was heavily involved, it looks like, in the 6800, another very important 8-bit processor. Um, in fact, uh, he's actually so important, uh, he has a Wikipedia article, and here we can put a face to the name. Um, back then, these chips truly were often designed by one or two individuals, uh, unlike today, where you have these facelessly large uh, engineering teams. Uh, real individual effort. This is a really well-written patent. It's got, of course, all the glorious details you'd expect. Uh, it talks about the block diagram, signal operation. Uh, and even more interesting, uh, it actually has uh, a microphotograph of the chip that was being patented. Now you can see this is quite a bit different than what we're looking at today. And uh, that's because I believe this is a newer version back then. Uh, they were probably still laying out by hand or had just gone into CAD. And here's very much a CAD one. The reason why the die is, of course, smaller is you want to be save uh, space. Um, but this one was packaged in a dip package, but I suspect uh, what was happening is you're getting this smaller. Then eventually we move the pads in, of course, to package into surface mount components, which were going to be emerging just after this chip got designed or just during it. So uh, anyways, going back into the patent, um, once you get past all the photographs, including all the layers, actually, which is really unusual, uh, something I don't think you'd do anymore in patents. Uh, th there's, of course, a wonderful description of uh, how it works, and uh, even some of the design choices he made talks about the uh, programmable logic array uh, for the microsequencers and things. So just a, a really well-written patent, and uh, I'll put the links to these uh, in the description of the video. Uh, talking about that PLA, uh, that I believe it's the block up there, very dense uh, looking. Let's zoom in. Uh, this is a programmable logic array, or probably more better known as a ROM. And this is the microcode. Uh, you always think of writing a high-level language like C or C++, and of course that gets into assembly, but uh, there's one level below that, and that's the microcode, which actually uh, flips the bits around in a chip, actually controls the gate lines. And uh, it's kind of like a program, and uh, what you of course can see there is that you can see certain fuses have been programmed and certain fuses are blown, and uh, that of course is the actual binary pattern of the microcode. Uh, below that, um, I suspect we're looking at the accumulators and all the index registers. That's kind of a regular pattern. And of course, below that, the actual logic which uh, steers the chip. Uh, the 65CO2 has no peripherals. It was definitely in the era where it was uh, just a CPU. And things like timers and uh, I.O. and such not would all be placed uh, on utility chips. So here you go. This is a really important chip in the uh, development of uh, computers and uh, a fun look. As always, if you want to take a more close look at the chip, I have a bunch of uh, zoomed-in microphotographs on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.